Hi, I'm Dr. James Johnson, Medical Director of Vitreous Floater Solutions. I have the only medical practice in the world exclusively dedicated to treating bothersome eye floaters in the eye. Um, I'm going to be doing some video blogs here, um, starting off with some basics like the anatomy of the eye and the optics of the eye, and taking you through eventually uh, a tour of floaters and treatment for floaters using a laser. Um, so let's get started. This here is an eye, cross-section of an eye. And over here in front of it is a cross-section of a single lens reflex type of camera, which is basically the camera body and the attachment, which is the lens elements up front. And also as part of that is a variable aperture that opens and closes to regulate the amount of light getting into the eye. In the back, on the back of that body there, is uh, the film or the sensor, which receives that light inner information and either processes it or exposes the film and it's processed to get, give you an image. There's other bells and whistles here, but we'll ignore those for now. Essentially, light enters the system. Those uh, fancy lenses will bend and refract the light rays and will come into a nice sharp focus onto the film or the sensor back there. Now, the eye is a lot more complex than this, but there are some anatomical and optical similarities. We have the camera body, which is the globe of the eye. We have the optics up front, which is the cornea and the crystalline lens. And in between those two is a variable aperture, which is the pupil, which opens and closes to regulate the amount of light getting into, that, uh, into the eye. Now, in the back of the eye, instead of a small flat sensor, we have a concave, essentially, extension of the brain, if you will, uh, the retina, which has the rods and cones, which take the light energy entering and con uh, convert that to nerve energy. And each of these rods and cones is connected to a nerve, which exits the eye, and uh, the brain does its job to interpret our idea of what we're seeing out here in the world. Now, uh, instead of being filled with air like the camera, the eye has fluid uh, that keeps it nice and plump and uh, to a certain pressure. And there are actually two different fluid chambers uh, separated by a thin membrane right here. Up front is the aqueous humor or aqueous fluid. And it's produced by specialty cells here. Uh, that fluid percolates up into the front part of the eye and it eventually is drained. And it's doing this all day, all night. A little bit of uh, production, a little bit of drainage, production drainage. And the balance of those two is what determines the pressure of the eye, which should be in a normal range, we'll just say in 12 to 21 millimeters of mercury or so, that's the pressure. Now that's one system, one fluid system. In back here is the vitreous. Now, normally, perhaps in a young eye or somebody who's not seen floaters and has no pathology, uh, this would be probably the least interesting part of the body. It's essentially water. It's 99% water and about 1% of something else, which are these collagen structural proteins. And if we were able to greatly magnify that, we would see these long stranded molecules uh, dispersed and separated mostly by water, some cross-linking, and uh, it is essentially, it's often referred to as a gel. It is more technically a viscoelastic fluid. It's viscous in the sense that it's thicker than water. It is elastic because it has a little bit of bounce to it. Um, and so because these are microscopic in nature, uh, optically, it would essentially be transparent. And so, like the camera, light enters the system, light rays are bent and refracted, and will just pass right through that clear vitreous, land on the retina, and there you go, good vision. Now, where my practice uh, starts to take an interest to people is when this vitreous is no longer clear. And one of the things that might happen, there might be some degeneration, some uh, clumping of these proteins, uh, strands that might be forming. Essentially, you have densities uh, where it used to be perfectly transparent. And these densities are what we see as floaters. So that's kind of a, a, a quick and, and fast and furious overview of the anatomy and the basic optics of the eye. Uh, in subsequent videos, I'll be talking about uh, more about the floaters and the different types of floaters and their location and how the different variables such as the pupil size and location will affect your ability to see those floaters. And then uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the laser and the laser physics, We'll talk about what can be treated and what can't be, uh, how to mitigate risk in the treatment, expectations of treatment. Essentially, I'll take you on a tour that is more or less the same thing that you would experience if you were here uh, sitting through a personal consultation, uh, an evaluation by me to see if you're a candidate for treatment. 
but this will give you an opportunity to have a little bit better understanding what's going on even before you come out here. And it might help uh, uh, seal the deal to, to make an appointment to come out and see me for an evaluation. So uh, that kind of winds up this video. Um, these take a little while for me to produce, so keep your eye out for more of these. I'll be posting them on my, on my website, and I'll try to get through them. Uh, it is important. And um, if you have any questions, you can go to the bottom of every page on my website at thefloaterdoctor.com, and you can, uh, you can send me a message. And, uh, but please try to read through the website first. There's a lot of information in there, and, uh, but I'll be glad to try to answer your questions for anything that isn't answered already. So keep your eye out for more videos. Uh, again, this is Dr. James Johnson, Medical Director of Vitreous Floater Solutions, also known as The Floater Doctor at thefloaterdoctor.com. Thank you.